Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for His Bitter Half and with me today are my two fellow, I guess, uh, Bitter Halves. I don't know. I can't think of anything for this one, but they're my good friends anyway. Mark Arnold and Camden Spees. Say hi. Hi. This is His Bitter Half released on the 20th of May 1950. It had a blue ribbon reissue sometime in 1957. It's the 589th in the series and it's directed by Frizz Freely. It did show up on MeTV Restored and that's what I'm using right now for this review. I see ya. In case you haven't seen this cartoon, I can't show the full thing here due to copyright on YouTube. But all that really happens is that Daffy ends up marrying. Of course, it's him legally for the money. But he finds out that the woman that he's married isn't exactly someone he should be with. So, yeah, it's one of those cartoons. It's definitely aged well, I can tell you that. Although, to be fair, she's not a very nice character. But we'll get into that in a few moments. A few bits of trivia. If this cartoon sounds familiar, you're probably more familiar with the short Honey's Money that had your me Sam marrying a woman for money. Same idea, also directed by Frizz. This um, is better, though, I think. I like both. Yeah, I, I don't know. For, I the like both for different reasons. The problem with Honey's Money is that it's really cheap. Well, yeah. It's to really, be fair, it's 60s, like the whole yeah. thing. I think they even reused animation because that's like at the end. But I love the design of the boy in the Honey's Money. That's probably why I probably like right. that one a little That's bit more. Like... Look at that one where we get to it and I'll be probably, you know, 75 or 80 years old at the rate I'm going. But, you know, we'll eventually get there, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Daffy mentions at one point, No one is going to henpeck this little black duck. Weirdly enough, Daffy himself was in a short by Bob Clampett a decade earlier called the Henpecked Duck. Just for those who aren't aware, henpecked, well, Mark, what would the terminology mean? Because I don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you on I'll the spot. Get, I'll kind of censor myself. Nowadays, uh, someone who's henpecked would probably be referred to as pee whipped. And if you don't know what pee is, you know, use your Google. imagination. <laughs> <laughs> and for your imagination. In any case, yeah, it's just an overbearing type, uh, to yeah. put it politely. Yes, uh, because we've got to keep this show cheap. G-rated, of course. When Wentworth, the little annoying son, which we'll, I'm sure we'll discuss very shortly, is yelling out, He's imitating Teddy Roosevelt. So that's the former US president, and that, that's what they were going for there. And another reference that you might not be aware of is when Daffy calls himself Daffy Oakley. He is referring to the famous sharpshooter Annie Oakley. So as for this cartoon now, because you guys selected this one and yet it seems like there might be a bit of... Would you say there's buyer's remorse? I mean, I, I quite like this one. I mean, starting with you, Mark, what, what did you think of this one? I did want to say one reference that you didn't say. There's one scene early in the picture where Daffy's at Woolberg's, which is a take on the old Woolworth's Five and Dime store. Ah. It's, it's in there. It says Woolberg's and it says Five and Ten and Twenty Five Cent Store. But so that's a, another pop culture reference that's very dated now. And generally, I like it. I've never cared for the wife character, but that's probably because you're not really supposed to like her. Yes. So it, it gets excused for that. And there is some funny stuff. Eddie Selzer in the Warner Club News, which you can read at cartoonresearch.com, which I'm a proud contributor of. Now, Eddie Selzer said if this would have been the 1950 or the 1949 Club News or of what months okay but he says mr selzer reports that the preview showings of his better half gives this cartoon the distinction of being the best gaffy picture to come out of the studio wow selzer was not there for great piggy bank robbery well this is the guy that didn't like the idea of teaming up sylvester and tweedy and yeah no, I have to I have to say one Selzer story that's actually a positive one. When Selzer died, all of the Oscars, he did not his family did not keep any of the Oscars. Everyone got an Oscar. I think Frizz got at least one Oscar when that happened, when he passed away. Chuck Jones got one, and Mel Blanc got Birds Anonymous' Oscar. So um, when I did my DePatty Freeling book, there was a photo that I used and it had Frizz Freeling with his numerous Oscars. But it was taken after Selzer passed away in 1970, so that now makes sense. So, <laughs> so as for this cartoon, I don't want to class as misinformation. This is probably a case of an educated guess. But the voice of 
I guess Mrs. Daffy Duck, because she doesn't even have a name in this one, and we'll, so we'll just call her Mrs. Daffy Duck, I suppose, because <laughs> there's nothing else. You know, I don't want to call her Battle Axe or anything, but, you know, to use an old term <laughs> that's used in this cartoon, but I asked Keith Scott to confirm whether it was Martha Wentworth who did the voice, because that's what has been going around, and he confirms that this one's actually not confirmed, because he researched deep into the archives and to see who voiced what, and this is one of the few that he could not confirm. He does note that Martha Wentworth did do a voice like the one in this cartoon as a female wrestler on a radio show in 1949. So that'd be a pretty good voice for a female wrestler. He also cites Lucille Bliss, like a younger Lucille Bliss, who actually did do a voice like that when she was younger, but it's up in the air at the moment. But Martha Whitworth is a good educated guess at the very least. So thanks, Keith, for clarifying that. I will say this, though. The child in this and in Honey's Money is also named Wentworth. So I don't know if that is a clue but why? <laughs> to kind of give her screen credited in some oddball way. you got to talk about this child. I mean, yeah. this one's just, you just want to do something that I don't want to say on the air, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You know what he reminds me of? He's he, like a stupider, nastier version of the chicken child, as it were. I don't know what his name is. That's in all those foghorn leghorn. There is a foghorn leghorn with a kid this jerky. So, you know, it's it's kind of that vibe. But, you know, anyway. I, I, mean, I mean, does Ted Pierce just not like kids or something? Because it just... I, no, I get that I mean, vibe. I mean, they all kind of did this kind of thing. This was kind of like a trope. Again, referencing one of my own books. Ted Pierce was one of the writers for the album. Alvin show, but not for long because he referred to Alvin and the Chipmunks as, and I'll leave it to you, rated a holes. <laughs> <laughs> Ross Bagdasar and Senior didn't like that too much, no. anyway, so he may not have had a liking for children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound like it. But to be fair, I mean, with the way I've seen some mothers Ed and the Pierce, kids I think out, did have a child. So I think so. He did. I think he had a son. Doesn't mean he liked him. <laughs> yeah, it, exactly. Go there is that yeah, uh, definitely. Going back to the cartoon, and I've noticed this is one of, one of the greatest arguments that these cartoons were not specifically made for kids. Because if you look in the beginning, you see Daffy reading an ad saying, Man with herd of cattle wishes to meet woman with frying pan. Object, hamburger. It should be pretty obvious what that means. That's a great indicator that, no, these were not made for kids. It's not like there's some little kid watching and says, Ah, oh, yes, I can relate to this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it would be parents relating to this, you know. Mm. They say, oh, yeah, I've been henpecked before, or I henpecked my husband one of the two. Well, that's right. But, you know, it's, it's an in, this is, cartoon's got one of the quickest setups, which makes no sense, and yet it's hilarious because of it, because you've got the fact that the ad says, why would you state that you're wealthy? I mean, that's one of the weirdest things in an ad. But anyway, put that aside. Yeah, I do like that the wife is very aware that it's just a money thing because she just hands them the bank book constantly. <laughs> yes, yes, there is that as well. But the, the weird thing about the setup, though, is that, okay, so he sees the ad, he's buying these rings, so of course, it's cheap 10 cents or 20 cents rings, and then he sees them married, and yet he doesn't even know what the house looked like, where he's like, this yours? Mm hmm so they you got that and he doesn't even know that she has a son what did they meet somewhere randomly and just get married all of a sudden like it's a, and, and if she's so rich just hire the help why bother with trying to marry someone wouldn't that be just anyway i'm, I'm looking into it too much but it's it's yeah. still a little hilarious setup that, that's the one of the most ridiculous setups i've actually seen but anyway i mean if you look at the logic in this cartoon i mean the, the whole dynamite gag at the end, which I, I quite enjoyed. Well, you gotta look out for. It was actually in this cartoon, I believe, because uh, I didn't see it before in, in the previous cartoons where Taffy's bill falls off in the exact same way it would in the hunting trilogy. And yeah. so I believe this is the, the first as well, which I didn't expect, but anyway, it's here. Daffy Duck gets scalped as well, also, besides uh, losing his bill, so... I don't know if this is, like, the first time there's, like, a greedy Daffy. We kind of hinted at that, uh, but it's definitely a transitional one for Daffy, from being just loony, wacky Daffy, you know, to what he became more greedy, especially in the Chuck Jones shorts. Yeah, I definitely agree, because I did notice that it's like, hey, his motivation here is clearly, oh, she's wealthy, so, and I'm going to live, live the high life in this... I'm assuming a mansion, because, you know, if you're rich, you, you would 
assume someone would live in, the, in a nice luxurious place but in any case so with rating I'm gonna be honest look while I enjoyed this one this was not a highlight for me especially with some of the others that come out in 1950 this one's like a 7 out of 10 uh, some of the gags were funny, but ultimately, I thought the Mrs. After That character was just so unlikable, and the kid was so unlikable. I get that's probably the point, and uh, no, not probably, that is the point. I don't know. Uh, 7 out of 10, I think. What do you guys uh, would rate this one? 7. I'd probably give it a 6. I mean, it's not as memorable as most. I mean, the henpecked lady, I guess, is but she's not a very likable character, so it doesn't improve the ranking just because you remember her. It's not a cartoon that I generally return to, and it might be why it's never been put on uh, home video in recent years, so. Yeah, it's just, it's not the best, but I had a few laughs in it, so I yeah, guess that counts it's not. It's not the praise that Ms. Mr. Selzer agrees with. Yes. <laughs> So, sorry, Salsa, you you were wrong about this one, just like you were wrong about Sylvester and Tweety and Pepe Le Pew and all that stuff. But in any case, we'll wrap it up here. So thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, take care. No, sir, no one's going to tell this little black duck what to do.